Hello, this is Dr. Adishina from ftplectures.com. Thank you very much for watching. Today I'm going to be talking about how to become a physician. How my journey started to go into emergency medicine. So I'm going to walk you through some of the tips that I used to become an emergency medicine physician. Currently I'm a resident at St. Luke's Hospital in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. And uh, I'm currently an uh, emergency medicine resident. So, how do you go about becoming a physician? Well, I started with a thought. And remember in life, when you want something, it started with an idea. And that idea has to come from deep within your subconsciousness. And when that idea is born, it's actually a seed. And you have to work persistently and say it out loud every day and work towards that goal. So if you never had a goal in life, it's kind of very, very difficult to be able to achieve a lot of things. So I had a goal, but before I had a goal, I had to have a thought, which was an idea. And my idea was to become a doctor. But then I have to reach my goal somewhere. So between the thought and the goal, that's where all the work is. So the path to becoming a physician in the United States, it's pretty straightforward. But for me, I came from Nigeria, so I had to go through college, I mean high school and middle school when I was in Nigeria. And the way it works, basically you start kindergarten, you go through your primary school education, you spend six years in primary school, and then you go forward to secondary school and complete your high school and your middle school. Well, in other countries, just we go through, we call it the junior secondary school, we call it in the senior secondary school and you finish your six years. So in total, you spent uh, about you know, six years in primary education and six years in secondary education. And then you graduate from high school. In the United States, it's different. You, know, you start your first grade by the time you're around five, or five years old. And then you go all the way forward from first grade to 12th grade. Okay? You move on to middle school after, and then you eventually progress to 12th grade. But it ends up being the same thing. Once you graduate, you just take the SATs in the US and then, or the ACTs, and that gets you into college. Well, when I got into college, I had a dream, I had an idea, and I was so passionate, I was willing to do anything to make sure I make this dream come alive. And I'm telling you right now, that is all that you need to succeed. The thought, the goal, the passion, the desire, to want to win, to want to become the thing and that dream that you've had in the back of your mind ever since you were little. And that's where the idea comes into play. So when you go to college, it's very important that you take the right course. A lot of students go to college and they're undecided. Well, that bothers me a little bit, but it doesn't at the same time. The reason is because, think about it, if you go to college and you're going undecided, you're spending thousands of dollars taking courses that may or may not cancel at your graduation requirement. Well, that means you need an advisor to be able to tell you exactly what to do or sit around and think through what exactly you want in life. Sometimes we don't always know what we want, but it's important that even if in the midst of not knowing what you want, you're not wasting money because college education is very expensive, especially if you're not getting a scholarship. So if you're gonna go to college, pick a major and pick a course you're gonna study. Now when you're picking a course you wanna study, you don't wanna go with the masses. You don't wanna do what everything, everybody else is doing. It's important that you pick a path. But whatever path you pick, you should have the future in mind. But it's very difficult when you're in high school or you're graduating and you're going to college to be able to actually know exactly what your future looks like because you can't really predict that. But you can actually look at people's record People that have accomplished certain things in life and say, how did they get there? And if there's a pattern to it and you can be able to fall into that pattern, you might be able to make it through that channel. So for example, let's pick becoming a doctor, right? Most students when they go to college, they choose to become a pre-med major, pre-medicine major, or biology. That is what most students often do. And they think because they're a pre-med major, they're guaranteed to go into medical school. Well, 
Most people that do pre-med major do get into medical school. But there's some people that don't get into medical school. Whatever, what happens to those people? We don't talk about it, and we're going to talk about it today. So, I was a biology major, but then halfway through my course in college, I added biochemistry. So I was a biochemistry and a general biologist major, so I was a double major when I was in college. But the most important thing is not the major you actually pick in college. If you want to go to medical school, you have to make sure you have the requirement, the requirement by the medical schools to get you into medical schools. And those requirements are biology. You have to take two courses in biology, Bio 101, Bio 102. You have to take chemistry, chemistry 101 and chemistry 102. And then you have to take physics, 101 and 102, okay? Physics 1 and physics 2. It depends which college you go to. They name it by whatever uh, numerical number, but it doesn't matter. It's the same thing. You have to take two physics, and you have to take organic chemistry, and you have to take part one and part two. And last but not the least, remember they're going to tax you for math and English, right? So when you take math, you want to have algebra and calculus. At least a minimum. You want to have calculus one, and if you're an overachiever or you want to impress the medical schools, you want to take calculus two. And obviously, you want to have English 101 and English 102. These are all the requirements that you only need to get into medical school. So regardless of what major you go into in college, you could do physics, humanities, dance, English, poetry. You could do anything. You could literally go to college and study anything and still go into medical school. So I always tell people, everybody always thinks you have to be a pre-med major. That is not true. That is not true. Remember, it doesn't matter what major you graduate with, where you go to an engineering school, you graduate in psychology, you graduate in physics, history. We all have to just take this one, two, three, four, five, six courses, have them stacked up, and get a good GPA, okay? You want to get a good GPA plus good MCAT scores, and you will be able to get into medical school. So what did I do? Although I was a science major, I went to biochemistry because I loved chemistry and I loved biology. Now, remember, I picked something I loved. I enjoyed the courses. Don't take something you don't enjoy, okay? So if you love math, Become a math major, and then take all these prereqs, okay? And then apply to medical school by taking your GPA, very high GPA, preferably you want to have it above a 3.3, 3.4, even 3.5 and higher. The higher the number, the better your chance of getting in, and then you want to have a solid MCAT score in the upper 29s and 30s, and then you'll be able to get into medical school. So what I did was I took all of this, graduated with a very strong GPA, and then applied to medical school. Now, I eventually got into medical school and got into the University of Medicine and Dentistry School of Osteopathic Medicine in New Jersey. So but here comes my path. My thought that I had when I was little, I worked so hard, hard towards it, I accomplished the goal, and today I'm a physician. So, now we go to medical school, and then you spend four years in medical school. Four years of hard, hardcore studying. A lot of vigorous studying. Nothing like you've ever seen before. But that is the path and the sacrifice and the price you have to pay to be able to become a physician. Because remember, you're going to be saving human lives. And think of doctors as like mechanics, right? When you take your car to the mechanic, you just drop it at the car shop and say, you know what? My muffler is making a big, loud noise or my engine is making this funny click noise. And the mechanic says, 
I'll take a look at it. And he uses knowledge of what the parts of the engines are, how to fit together and work. Goes in there sometimes, open it up and say, oh, your gasket is broken. Something is not working. Your carburetor is not working. Or your, your radiator is overheating. It's because he knows a lot about the machine. The human body is like one of the most complicated, by far, the most complicated machine built in the universe. So when we as doctors approach patients, we have to figure out and put up together the puzzles. In order to be able to understand that concept, you have to go to medical school. And when you get to medical school, they'll teach you the tricks. They'll teach you the knowledge. They'll give you the scientific background, the research. And you'll study the human body like no one has ever studied it before. So you can have the knowledge to be able to approach patient care and help them tremendously to get them back into that physiologic state compared to the pathologic state which they came into to see you in the first place. After four years of medical school, you'll be applying for residency. And when you apply for residency, you pick where you want to specialize. And it's hundreds. There are like, you know, tons of residencies you can apply to and fellowships eventually once you finish residency. And that's how I did it. You know, people will tell you it's a long process. It's a long time. But you know what? Nothing good in life comes easy. You must be willing to pay the price. And you must be passionate about it. You have to stay focused. You can't let any distractions sway you from becoming what you want. Because in this world, there's a lot of distractions. A lot of people with negative, negative thoughts. They'll give you negative ideas. They'll tell you, oh no, you're not smart enough. Oh no, you've applied twice, you can't make it. Don't ever listen to them. You know why? Because they can't do it, they think you can't. But you're gonna have to prove them wrong. You're gonna say to yourself, I am going to become what I want to be. And if, if I want to become a doctor, I will pay the price with the long years of sacrifice. And with hard work, dedication, passion, and the willingness to succeed at all costs. And success being your goal, so you can fulfill exactly the thought and the idea that's going to help you become a physician. That's what you have to have. And you can't let past failures drive you down. You got to keep moving. You got to study hard. You spend tons of countless amount of hours sitting in your library, in your home, reading, and try to understand the knowledge and the concept needed to be able to function as a physician. But in the end, it's so worth it because the joy and the satisfaction that you gain from helping a patient get from being sick to being healthy cannot be bought with a price. And when you do this, you will have joy and then you will have peace and you'll be able to heal the people around you just by the fact of the knowledge that you have. All right. Thank you very much for watching this video. It's Dr. Adeshina from ftplectures.com. I want you to subscribe by clicking the subscribe button at the top so you can subscribe to my channel and you can visit my website www.ftplectures.com www.ftp lectures.com and on my website I have about 150 hours of medical videos on topics and you can even go to our channel youtube.com slash FTP lectures and you'll be able to see lecture videos that I've made for students medical students nursing students for PAs physician assistants even chiropractors even dental students and even doctors even can watch these videos and help them understand clinical medicine in the most ridiculously simple format ever. All right. Thank you very much for watching. Till I see you again, don't forget to subscribe. Have a great day. Bye-bye.